What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and today I want to show you guys how to set up SSH key authentication on Ubuntu 22.04. So let's get started. So as I stated in the intro of the video, uh, if you're using Ubuntu or if you're using a server in the cloud, uh, you're using a Raspberry Pi where you have a server, you know, set up or something, you have to heavily rely on SSH. And the best way to protect yourself when opening up SSH to the internet is by setting up SSH keys and turning off password authentication. This is one of the safest or one of the easiest and best ways to protect your server that you have, you know, on the internet. And I wanted to show you guys how to do it. Now, I've done this video uh, multiple times in the past. Uh, I just wanted to do a quick update to it because someone asked me about it. And this will give me the opportunity to put the information on how to do this on my website. So you guys can check that out. It'll be the latest version of Ubuntu currently that I'll show you guys. And it should last for a while as a reference for people that are trying to set up their server using SSH keys. Now let's go on and hop over to my Ubuntu system. I have a desktop, you know, set up. I also have a server set up, which will be quote unquote, my cloud server that I'll be connecting to over the internet, but it's all contained on my, on my network using virtual machines that I have set up on my Proxmox server. And all of this will work the exact same if you're setting this up on a cloud server like uh, Google Cloud or Linode or one of these cloud providers, if you have a server out there, you know, on one of these networks, you definitely want to set this up. And I want to show you guys why, how, and this will definitely work for that situation as well. So let's hop over right fast and get started. Before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. Okay, so as I stated, I'll be using Ubuntu 22.04. Like I said, I have the desktop edition and I also have a server set up for the demonstration. And I'll connect to that via SSH uh, within the terminal on here so you guys can see how to set up those keys. But the first thing you want to do is generate your actual key pair. And when you do this, it creates two different keys. You have your public key and you have your private key. And your public key is what you put on the server. And then the private key is what you keep on the system that you're connected from. And basically it does a key authentication. It's almost like a handshake, like similar to a password. You know, you got your handshake, your authentication handshake. Well, it basically compares those keys uh, that you have, you know, one locally as well as the one on the server to authenticate you. And then you connect to the server from there. And so SSH, the, the actual application, it has some built-in tools that you can use in order to create your keys. And that command is called SSH keygen. And it's uh, typically dash keygen. So SSH dash keygen. So let's walk through how to actually create those or generate those keys that we can use to connect to the server. And let's make this a little bigger. Um, and like I said, it's a command line tool. Uh, you have to type it in the terminal. And quickly, let me show you guys the man page for uh, SSH dash key gen, press enter, boom, that'll show you uh, the actual utility. And you can go through, it has a whole bunch of options, but essentially it says open SSH authentication key utility. And like I said, it's created, it, it basically creates those keys and you have a whole bunch of options and I want to read you guys the description so you can get a better understanding, but it says SSH key gen generates, manages, and converts authentication keys for SSH. SSH key gen can create keys for use by SSH protocol version two. The type of keys to generate is specified with the T option. 
If invoked without any arguments, SSH keys will generate a RSA key. And that's what we want. We want to use RSA uh, to generate our keys. That's the default. I'll show you guys how to do that. So let's go down and quit this and go down and generate our keys. Okay, so let's get let's verify that we can connect to the server. That's kind of one of those steps you want to uh, check first just to make sure you can get to it um, you I'm assuming that you already know that you can get to it or not but uh, you want to verify that let's uh, type in the IP address but it's 192.168.10.1 150 and all you have to do is put the IP address of whatever server that you're, you know, set up. Hopefully you follow my video that shows you how to set up a SSH server by modifying uh, the configuration file, which we're going to do a little bit of that here as well. I just want to verify it or, or at least let you know. You, I mean, you should know how to connect to, you know, a server using this. Uh, so let's go down and type in our password. And that's what we're trying to avoid. We're trying to avoid password authentication because if someone guesses that password they'll have access to your account uh, so and there's a plenty of brute forcers out there that will test you know passwords especially if they're trying to hack you specifically they can find out some passwords that may have been leaked in a data breach and if you've used that password again you know they're probably going to have that in a you know a dictionary or something uh, and possibly guess that password and get into your SQL server. I mean your SSH server, which will, you know, destroy your life. But as you can see, we logged into it. We're good to go. So know what the password is and all that stuff. So let's go down and clear. Now let's go down and generate those keys. And essentially all you have to do is type SSH uh, dash key gen. Now there are some options, like I was saying, uh, typically, if you're setting this up like in a production environment, I always recommend people use uh, a stronger key. Now, by default, I believe it uses 3072 as the bits uh, for the RSA key pair. Uh, but a lot of times uh, I recommend, especially if you're using a produ production environment, you can do um, dash B, which is an option that's basically for the bits. And you can set it up uh, and you can run it as 4096. But by default, it currently uses 3072 bits. Uh, 4092, 4096, uh, it kind of takes longer to generate those keys because of the uh, the fingerprint, you know, and all that is longer. Everything is longer and it's more complex, uh, which makes it a little bit more secure. But the default is fine as well. You know, you shouldn't have any problems with running it that way uh, using the default. But let's go down and run it because I'm, I'm rambling a little too much. But I really want to make sure you guys understand this. So let's go down and type uh, SSH keygen, press enter. It's going to generate our key pair. It's going to put it in our uh, home directory under a uh, hidden directory called .sh, .ssh. Uh, and there's a directory under there, ID underscore RSA. That's where our keys are going to be stored. So all we got to do is press enter here uh, and that's just verifying that location. That's where we want to put it. Now, just to explain this, this is entering a passphrase and this pass passphrase is for the private key. I recommend you do this uh, if you, you know, it kind of defeats the purpose of not having to type in a password but you can use your key ring on your system so whenever you log into the system it'll unlock that that uh private key for you so you don't have to type that password in as long as you're logged into the system then once you log out of it it'll lock it but if you don't use the key ring you're gonna have to type in a password to pass phrase to unlock that uh key so I recommend you use this. I'm not going to use it currently, but you typically just type in a passphrase for, you know, for your key and that'll lock your private key for you when it's not in use. So if someone steals your laptop, uh, get into your system and get that key uh, for whatever server it is, uh, then they would have to guess that password. So it, it's just an extra layer of protection. Uh, and I kind of just want to explain it so you guys wouldn't know. That's exactly what that's for. In case someone steals your property and they get that file, which I recommend you have an encrypted operating system. So they would have to go through and get through the encryption. You know, But let's say that they steal the system and you're already logged into it. They can get that pass. I mean, they can get that RSA key, private key, but it's useless if they if you have a passphrase on it. So I'm gonna press enter. 
that way it won't save a passphrase and let's go through and uh, get this thing generated and like i said like i originally said it uses uh 37 2 30 72 uh instead of 40 96 bit or it's a key so right now it's already created it's created you can see where it's located um the identification has been saved id underscore rsa and then here is your public key and currently what we need to do is push this to our ssh server so we can connect to it using this key versus typing in a password now let's go to and copy our public key up to the server and we already know what the ip address is because we ssh into it not that long ago but essentially and i just hit the up arrow so i can bring up the previous command so i don't have to type in the ip address again but there's another utility built in ssh it's called ssh dash copy dash id and it's essentially copying our public key on this system to that server so and then also just go on and type in your account uh for on that server which is josh and most likely you have the same account if you have a different account you know what i'm saying this is where you want to type that in you know what i'm saying it's just i happen to have the same exact account on there same name and everything sometimes most people don't don't you know they'll have like a different user account over on the server versus what they have on the system uh so you want to type it out and i just want to type it out so you guys would know you know that's how you actually do it if you have another name on the server but let's go down and press enter and you'll see it it'll it'll walk through and um it'll connect to the server after it um you know figures out what you're trying to do so you type in your password over on that server and what it's going to do is copy that key over to the server and so we are pretty much done now let's go on and uh connect to the server right fast i'm gonna just type uh ssh 192.168.10.150 to that server and you do the exact same for your public server or your raspberry pi you have set up that's running the server once you have those keys on there you can just log into it using you know this and as you can see didn't ask me for my password or anything and so we are good to go now an extra layer of protection now that we on the server let's go down and clear the screen so as you can see we're still ssh into that server uh, what you want to do is go into your ssh configuration and if you need help with understanding the ssh configuration i did a video showing people how to set up a ssh server um, and there is a configuration file under etc uh, so let's go to that etc ssh and then ssh d underscore config and press enter that is our config for the ssh server on this server and what you want to do is once you got your keys on there you want to make sure you got your keys on there first before you do this you don't want to do this before just i just want to stress this because you can lock yourself out of the server if you turn this on and you don't have the keys up there unless you have some form of physically accessing that server then you know what i'm saying uh, then you won't be able to get into the server if you make these changes beforehand so if we go down all we have to do is scroll down and search for password authentication uh, so let's see if we can find this thing right fast password authentication there we go so it's disabled currently uh, it's actually commented out so password authentication what we want to do is change that to no so we go to the end of it delete off the yes type no uh, and then save this file we're gonna write that out and then exit and then we need to in order for this new configuration change to take effect we need to restart the SSH server so all we have to do is type sudo uh, system ctl and then restart SSH and press enter and that should restart our SSH server or actually let's see let's make sure uh see sshd yeah there we go so that should work for us now let's exit out boom and let's go down and clear and let's connect back to it just to verify that we can actually connect back to the server we're good to go with it now let me switch over to another system that i have so i can show you guys what will happen once you turn on password authentication all right cool so i'm logged into my other virtual machine this is pop os uh, and let's go on in and try to connect to this server right fast. So just zoomed in on it just so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. And let me move it down, get rid of this alerts. 
so you guys can actually see but i'm gonna try to ssh into this server so 192.168.10.1 50 and press enter and then it's gonna you know go through the process you know asking you to save a fingerprint and all that good stuff but once we get to that point um once we get past that point it says permission denied because it's looking for a key we have password authentication turned off on this system well on this server and so it's only looking for a key so that's gonna block anybody if you don't have a key you can't get into the server at all if you don't have a key stored on this system that's why it's important to keep that private key what basically the name of it private you know what i'm saying and you never want to let anybody get access to it so that's very important that you you know secure it as best you can so hope you guys enjoyed the video this was a very simple you know setup of actually setting up uh, ssh keys and i tried to make it as least difficult as possible so you guys can get a full understanding of what you're actually doing when you're going through setting up password key authentication on your ssh server and not mess it up it's straightforward what the if you follow exactly what i did this is straightforward and this exact way of doing it will work on other versions of ubuntu as well as like fedora and all these other distributions this exact same way of setting this up will work the exact same way on other distributions so be mindful of that and of course i'll have the link down in the description of the video of the article i will write that shows you guys how to actually do this and all you have to do is copy and paste it you know into your system you can follow along as i'm going through this in this video so go down and like share and subscribe uh and go down and yeah really like the video i definitely appreciate all you guys that do you know but it's very important that you guys like the video it kind of helps the channel grow um it looks as though a lot of people like the information but they don't really like like hitting that like button but if you can i definitely would appreciate it if you like that that or hit that like button so i can hop into the algorithm like everybody says <laughs> But anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the video. I hope this helps someone. Uh, and of course, as always, keep it safe.